in the authentic uh, swing, you talk about, it's sort of a behind the scenes look at how, how the, the book came about and the, ultimately the movie came about. Um, what is it about, can you speak to how golf works for you as this analogy for these other, these other ideas? Cause it's, it, it does, like it's, it's counterintuitive and yet it completely makes sense when you explain it. Um, first of all, I know that people who are not into golf, it seems like the dopiest sport in yeah, the world. Yeah, I'm not into, I'm, I'm like, I have, I'm not into golf at all. Like I have a hard time understanding. Although I watched the Tiger documentary and I was riveted by uh, that. Well, they say about golf and it's really, really true that with almost any other sport, if you don't play it and you see it, like say motor racing or, or uh, surfing or uh, mountain climbing, even if you don't play it, you can look at it and go, oh, that looks kind of cool. You know, look mm -hmm. at Laird Hamilton going down that, you know, but golf is an exception. You look at golf, you go, it's a bunch of white guys, you know, wearing plaid pants. It seems like the, the fat guys, it's Donald Trump. It's like uh -huh. the most poor, but trust me, <laughs> it's a great sport. And uh -huh. to prove it, Michael Jordan loves it. John Elway loves right. it, you know, Tom Brady. So anyway, um, the one thing about golf, you were talking about the authentic swing before is like I had two friends when I was uh, a kid, identical twins who played golf. And the amazing thing to me was they had abs completely different golf swings. And I thought, shouldn't they have the exact same swing? They're the same DNA. And it is true that in some crazy way, we're born with a swing. Before we ever pick up a club, you have a swing, I have a swing, everybody around here has a swing. And you cannot change that swing. If you think about golfers like Fred Couples or Jim Furyk that have these crazy loopy swings, they didn't, they didn't evolve that through study. So to me, the idea of the authentic swing and finding your authentic swing is the equivalent of, of your authentic self. It's what we were talking about before about being born in, as, with a gift and, and, that's, and that's it. And so a lot of us, like in golf, people will try to mold themselves into some perfect kind of a swing and it never works. And the real answer is, if you can, to find your own authentic swing and then you know, fine tune it so that you don't have bad habits in there. And so I think that's the same thing in, in writing, in art or anything in life is finding who, who we are. We, we already are that thing. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, if we can just find it and be it, but that's right. the hardest thing in the world. That's why they say, know thyself is like the hardest thing in the world to do. Right, but that's what we're here to do, yeah. right? And, and to extend the golf metaphor, there is this, um, truth in that it's not about anyone other than yourself and your relationship with yourself. Like you're, yes. <laughs> it is the ultimate individual sport, right? And this idea that you talk about of, of um, I forget how you phrase it exactly, but most, most athletes are reacting without a forethought in the moment, whether they're, you know, ah. hitting a backhand or, you know, uh, blocking a jump shot, but in golf, there's stillness, which forces you to, you know, engage with your thinking mind, which moves you away from the ability to execute on what you're there to do. And it's all about the process of getting out of your own way, right? And that yes. goes back to the stripping away thing in Bagger with, you know, the, the, um, the you know, who are you question to eradicate all the noise so yes. that you can be fully present. Yes. And like, as you're saying, golf is one of the few sports, maybe shooting a free throw or kicking a field goal is a parallel uh -huh. where you do it from a standing start. Like you say, in basketball, you know, you're reacting to somebody or tennis, the ball's coming, you react to it. And it's easier to do that in motion. It's more, it's easier to do it. But from a standing start where your brain starts working, but then there's a whole other aspect of golf that was in uh, this book, The Authentic Swing. Mm. And this is kind of a crazy thing and it gets spiritual is that there's really no other sport where you have a caddy, where you have another person standing at your shoulder that technically is your servant, right? You're paying them to carry the bag. But as we all know, the bond between the caddy and a golfer is tremendous. And, and in... Um, in the Bhagavad Gita, where you have the great warrior Arjuna, his charioteer is Krishna, i.e. God in human form. And that was the parallel that I drew. Like, so God appears as a servant 
at your side and a kind of an advisor. And I think that uh, a lot of, uh, of uh, Christians who believe in a personal savior related to the, the character of Bagger Vance that way. But I also do think if you think about I know we're getting into deep waters no, here. This, but is, this, is my, this is the stuff I love the most. If you think about um, uh, the Odyssey and Odysseus, as he's on his journey, we, we, people forget about this. He's accompanied by the goddess Athena and he talks to her all the time and she intercedes for him. And um, uh, anybody that, uh, you know, Martin Luther King or somebody would talk to Jesus all the time, like he was at, at his shoulder. And so the same thing with uh, Arjuna, the great warrior, and Krishna is at his side as an instructor and as a divine archetype. And I do think, this is when I say I believe in the muse, and although resistance is the negative side of it, the goddess is the positive side of it. That You know, when I said I was seized by the story of Bagger Vance and yeah. had to write it, that's what that was. It was coming mm -hmm. from another, so that was the equivalent of of uh, Krishna at your shoulder or Athena or Jesus yeah. or whatever. Some entity from another dimension of reality, from a dimension of potentiality, where do songs come from, where do ideas come from, where do books come from? Um, I think there's a lot of reality. So back to golf, the idea in golf that you have this person at your shoulder that guides you. And you can see if you watch a golf tournament, you watch Phil Mickelson or Tiger mm -hmm. or whatever, you know, they're taught, they turn to yeah. the caddy all the time. The caddy saves them, you know? In other sports, you don't have them. Michael Jordan can't stop and confer with, you know, or anything like that, right? Um, so I, I do think that there's, there's a real spiritual aspect to that, or at least a metaphor for something spiritual. Right, right, right. Yeah, and that's one of the reasons why the Tiger documentary was so interesting, hearing the perspective of his caddy. Have you seen the documentary yeah, I did, yet? Yeah, and then yeah. When when Tiger fires him and the guy's like I you know I, I mean it's such a sacred relationship yeah and that seemed to be a real turning point in terms of how Tiger was approaching the world at yeah. that point in his life I think so yeah and like you know Dustin Johnson I don't mm -hmm. know if you he's like a one, number one or whatever he is now his brother is his caddy and they've been like and and he's a real good player too his brother mm -hmm. Austin and somehow that's in a way a secret to his success that you can see these two brothers are you know really in it together? It's not a one-man fight; it's a two-man right, fight. Right, right, right.